Hey guys, today I'm going to be showing you how to make this Assassin's Creed style wrist mounted sling bow. As I said before, this sling bow is wrist mounted and it can be easily put onto your wrist using velcro and leather straps which I've made and this is going to be the tutorial video and in a previous video I've shown all of the shooting of this crossbow and how to load it. So now let me show you how to make the crossbow. So the first thing that you need to do is go to the link in the description down below and find the blueprints of the slingshot crossbow. You're going to need to scale it up so that it's able to fit your arm and I've got quite a small arm so if you just use the size which it is already it probably won't fit. Then print it out and trace it onto some 9mm plywood. For the trigger mechanism part I'm making sure that I'm going to use some especially strong plywood. I've now cut out the plywood using a jigsaw but you could use any saw that's able to cut the corners around the wood and this is what it looks like once I've cut out all three of the layers. The trigger mechanism is able to fit inside the gap just like this. I'm now gluing the middle layer to the back layer just using wood glue. This is what the layers should look like once the glue has set. I'm now using my drill press just to drill a hole through the trigger mechanism part for a pin which is going to go through and that's going to be a pivot for the slingshot. Once that's done I can put this pin through and they can both pivot freely. Now I need to place the trigger mechanism onto the middle layer and check that it can pivot freely when the pin is in the right place and when it can then I'm going to hammer the pin down a little bit so that there's a little hole in the back and then I'm going to drill all the way through. Once I've done this now the trigger mechanism can sit inside the slingshot crossbow. Now just using wood glue again I've put the last layer on and I just need to drill a hole through the back so that the pin can go all the way through. Now that I've done that I'm going to start to use files to enlarge in the groove which the bands are going to slide into later on when you're loading the slingshot crossbow and I'm just using a normal metal working file and just making sure that the groove's wide enough. Once you've done this, this is what the trigger assembly should look like. Now I can just test the trigger mechanism with just a piece of elastic then I'm going to hook it over the trigger mechanism and I can pull really hard on it and nothing happens and it doesn't pop off the trigger so I know it's going to work and then when I pull the trigger it releases it smoothly. Now I can take out the trigger mechanism and I'm going to start smoothing and rounding all of the edges. This is what it looks like once that's done. Now I've just cut out a piece of 18mm multiplex plywood which is 9cm wide and I've rounded the edges very slightly and you need to cut one out in pretty much the same shape as this but it can just be square. It needs to be at least 9cm wide or it won't be able to accommodate the rollers. Because this is going to be attaching onto the bottom of the crossbow I'm just going to round the edge so that it's going to be smooth when it's pressing against my wrist. For attaching it to the bottom of the crossbow I'm just going to be using lots of screws so that it's very secure and I'm going to be countersinking the screws into the wood so that none of them are sticking out. This is what it looks like once that's done. The attachment's very secure and it's definitely not going to be coming off. I've put some black insulation tape over the edge where there's a gap in between two of the layers just to make it look a bit better. Now I'm going to be making and attaching the bolt guides which are going to guide the crossbow bolt as I fire it. I'm going to be making these out of some 2mm thick pine wood and I'm basically just going to cut it into two long strips which are going to run down the length of the crossbow and then I'm going to hammer it with nails down onto the crossbow so that there's a little gap that the bolt can slide along. It's very important that these are made properly and are aiming straight down the barrel of the crossbow otherwise it won't be accurate. This is what it looks like once I've attached the bolt guides and I've rounded the edges. I've put two dots half a centimetre in on the edge of the 18mm multiplex plywood where I'm just going to drill holes. Once that's done I can attach the rollers which I'm going to be using for the bands to attach around. These rollers are made out of some skateboard bearings which I've scavenged from an old skateboard and they don't have to be good skateboard bearings because even bad ones have really low friction. Each roller contains three skateboard bearings taped together with two large washers on the top and the bottom. The rollers are threaded onto two bolts which can just be tightened up using nuts and washers. When they're both attached they spin freely and they look pretty good. Now it's time to make the part where the bands are going to attach. 
as you probably saw before the bands are going to attach at the back and then go around the rollers so I need to drill a hole right at the very back of the slingshot crossbow and then I can put a thick nail through so now all of this is done and I've super glued in the nail and you could fire the slingshot crossbow now if you were able to attach some bands but loading it would be almost impossible especially since there's nowhere to attach it to your wrist so now I need to show you how to make and attach the loading mechanism so I'm going to start with the same thick nail which I was using before and then I'm going to cut off one centimeter of some hard wooden dowel and this can't be soft wood, it needs to be a hard wood wooden dowel. I now need to use a rat tail file to just file a groove all the way around the wooden dowel which the string is going to sit into. You need to do this on both of the pieces. Once I filed the groove all the way through I just used my drill press to drill a hole straight through the middle of the wooden dowel and once that's done it can now be put onto the bolt and it can spin freely. I now need to drill a hole halfway up the crossbow near the back for the metal nail to go through. Once that's done it can be mounted onto the crossbow like this but then the nail can just fall off. So to fix that I'm going to hit the end of the nail with a hammer and mushroom it out so that it can't fall off. I'm now bending a nail so that it's in the shape of a hook so that it can hook over the bowstring and it can pull back the bands and I'm just going to be doing this using a hammer and my vise. It's important that when you bend it that it can fit over the string. Once I finish making the hooks I can tie a knot around them with some very strong paracord and then they can just be hooked on like this. I've made sure that the length of the string means that when they're all the way around the rollers and then attached around the front of the crossbow that they can pretty much reach to the front of where the rollers are. Now when you pull on the string at the very front, it pulls the string around the rollers and starts to pull the hooks back. Now the actual crossbow part is finished and we need to make the wrist mounted part. You probably also noticed that I spray painted the crossbow black just to make it look a lot better. You could also paint it a camouflage colour if you wanted. The first step in making the wrist mounted part is to cut out a piece of leather and put it onto the crossbow. I'm just using nails and the shape of the leather has just got semicircles cut out of it. For the part which is going to be attaching round my wrist at the front, I'm going to be using an old wrist brace which I have lying about and I need to attach it to the leather. The semicircles are designed so that they fit round the part where my thumb are going to come out. So for attaching the wrist brace to the leather, I'm just going to be punching holes with my hole puncher, but you could also probably use a drill, and as long as you're careful that the material doesn't get all caught up. Once I've punched holes all the way around the edge of the leather, I'm then going to take a thin strip of leather which I've cut out, and tie a knot in the end and start to thread it through all of the holes. You can be really creative with this part, and you can do whatever different types of stitches that you want. Once I get to the end, I'm just going to tie it off. And this is what it looks like once I've done it on both sides. To securely attach the end of the wrist brace to my crossbow, then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a piece of leather and it's going to run down the edge of the crossbow and it's going to be hammered into the wood of the crossbow and then sewed into the leather. Once this is all done and I've done both of the stitchings on either side, I'm then going to take some super glue and super glue all of the joints and knots so that it's definitely not going to come undone and it's very secure. Now the front of the wrist mounted part is very secure and I think it looks really cool. Now I need to make the part which is going to attach to my forearm and almost up to my elbow. To do that I'm going to take a long thin strip of leather which is easily long enough to attach around my forearm. Then I'm going to attach it to one of the raised parts of the edge of the leather on the edge of the crossbow and then I'm going to punch holes through it and just sew it in. I also super glue all of the stitchings. I then do this on the other side as well. This is what the attachment looks like once I've rigged it up. You can also just use Velcro. The nails can just push through the holes which I've hammered it into the leather just like a belt. Now the crossbow is pretty easy to put on and once I put it on it's really really secure. I've also got an added elastic band to the top of the trigger so that when I fire it it returns back to its position. As well as this, I add some bent nails over the edge of the string so that it can't pop off the rollers at the back. I've also added magnets to hold the hooks at the front while I'm firing. The final step is to add a magnet to hold the end of the bolt in place and then it's ready to fire. Once that's done, the crossbow's ready to take on some bands. If you don't know how to make bands for slingshots or crossbows, check out my video on my channel on how to make flat bands. Check out my other video which is the shooting video where I test this crossbow to its limits firing at different targets and I also show you how to load it. 
thanks for watching guys i really hope that you've enjoyed this video and if you have you'll definitely like some of the other videos on my channel so subscribe and go and check them out also if you have any suggestions for what you'd like me to make in a future project just send me a personal message